Next, uh, let's look at how to perform cluster analysis. Uh, a cluster analysis is conducted using the SAS data set prop underscore RP70 from proc means. This data set prop underscore RP70, I want to show you one more time from the results window. This is the data. There will be three variables we're going to use for the cluster analysis. One is state, another one is this freak variable, and also this prop variable. All right. Here is the proc cluster procedure. This procedure it was method equals ward option. This requests ward minimum variance method. And the freak statement here will provide clustering of groups with uh, similar proportions identical to that of Kreniger method. And also for this plot equal option, it's plot equal dendrogram option with the vertical and height option. Request that a uh, vertical dendrogram will be provided with the height based upon R square value. And also the information on the final um, cluster is saved in a temporary SAS data set. It's called uh, tree info using this alt tree equal option. And also the ID statement here request that observation are identified by their uh, state in the tree info data set when the cluster history is printed. And finally, the result of the cluster procedure will be saved in the temporary SAS data set, which is cluster, and using this ODS output uh, statement. For more information about PROC cluster procedure, I include a link here if you're interested uh, in getting more information for this procedure. Okay. Let's run this uh, PROC cluster procedure and see what we have for the result. Okay, this is the results output for cluster analysis on all score uh, by states. All right, let's take a closer look at this cluster history. This is the uh, main table we want to get from this output. So we can see this is the number of clusters. We have total seven clusters. And for those two columns um, here, sorry, for those two columns, it belongs to clusters. It shows information about the clusters joined together. And also we have uh, frequency here, and as well as semi-partial R square and R square. Let's go to the code window. I already copied this cluster history table into our common area. This is the table I copied from the output window. This is the cluster history uh, table. And also I include uh, all the explanation here. So that will um, make it uh, very clear to you. I'm going to explain this table. First, in this first row, that the states, which is NC and VA, are combined first. That's why those two um, states are listed under clusters joined. Those two states are joined for cluster 7. To form uh, cluster 7, cluster 7 it also has a short name, which is CL7. Okay, after those two states combined, it result a 50 which is a frequency in students in this combined cluster, all right? And also the R square value represents the proportion of the original chi square remaining after those two states are combined. So I include the original chi square which is 18.7393, okay? And the semi-partial R square here represent the change in the chi square. So in this first step, when the two states are combined, we can see there is a no change in the chi square value 
to the fourth significant digit. In other words, essentially 100% of the original chi-square value is retained after collapsing to seven clusters from original eight states. Okay. Next, let's look at the fourth row. This fourth row shows the state Utah is combined with cluster 7 to form uh, cluster 4. By far, we have total four clusters. It also can be illustrated in the dendrogram graph. Let's go to the result window and take a look at the dendrogram. So we can see the middle here. It represents cluster 4. Uh, NC and VA combined into cluster 7. And then with UT, all three states combined into cluster 4. In fact, the dendrogram gives a great visual on how the R square changes with every collapse of two clusters and specifically illustrates where the collapsing may end. Okay. Finally, this process continues so that each subsequent cluster result in a minimum reduction in the original chi-square until all the states are combined into one cluster. This represents when cluster 3 and cluster 2 are combined, resulting in a total reduction in the original chi-square. And also from this table, we notice there is a last column called Tai. This information showing that if observation with a value as T in this column Tai, that means the clustering at this level is not unique. If a Tai occurs earlier in the cluster history, so ordinarily there is a little effect on the later stage. However, if a tie occurs midway or later in the process, then analysts should investigate further. But this situation is not happening in our case, in our data. Okay. And then here I include a proc print procedure here. I want to print out this data set cluster generated from this output statement. Okay, let me print this and see the results. This is the contents of cluster history. That's part of the output from cluster analysis. For each clustering step, here we have a number of clusters, and those two columns is the states or clusters being joined. And we have frequency for new cluster, as well as this semi-partial R-square and also R-square, as well as this tie information, okay?